Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. George Tech head coach Jeff Collins. Coach, if you could open us up with some remarks before we take questions. Yeah, appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, obviously, disappointing loss was uh, hats off to, to our opponent. That's a really good team. They're obviously uh, number one team in the country for a reason. Uh, they're really good in every single phase of the game. And uh, when we don't play our best, obviously, uh, that's what happens to us. Um, but in the locker room, there's a lot of guys that just played their uh, last college football game. Uh, I apologize for being a little bit later getting up here, um, but I just want to make sure that the, the love, the respect, <clears throat> excuse me, for the last time uh, that some of those young men are going to be in a Georgia Tech uniform. Uh, I spent the right amount of time uh, with them uh, before we came up here. Uh, to meet with you guys. Appreciate all that you guys do. Back-to-back um, -back week versus two of the top 10 teams in the country. Um, very disappointing in how we played in those. And uh, for whatever progress we had made, um, you know, I, I thought we took a step back, but this is the time. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll be a deep dive into every single uh, phase of our program um, and then take the next steps uh, in order to improve uh, and get better. Uh, obviously, it was a small senior class that we love, that we respect, uh, and a lot of young guys that have played a lot of ball, um, just how to get them uh, to the next level. So, um, but today is about respecting those guys that are playing their last game. Uh, and they have all of my love, all of my respect, and they'll have that uh, for the rest of my life. Okay, questions. If you could, please raise your hand. Got a microphone. We'll start over here with Kelly. Jeff, obviously a hard time, but get shut out of back-to-back -back games. And just kind of what's your message, I guess, to the fan base and yep. to the people supporting Georgia Tech who are obviously hurting in a way that's a little different than you, but hurting nonetheless. Yeah, sure, absolutely. And I addressed that uh, on Tuesday. Um, and I know Ken's asked it several times this season. See, Jeff Schultz is here today. Um, I know he's brought that, posed that question uh, several times. And uh, I mean, it's, it's understandable, um, but there's nobody more frustrated and disappointed uh, than myself and the, the people that are involved in the organization who with our charge is to get us to the next level. And uh, you know, there's no reason or need or for me to point counterpoint all of the progress that we've made, that's not necessary right now. Uh, the whole focus is putting this game to bed uh, against the number one team in the country, um, and then respecting our seniors uh, who we love. And then tomorrow when we come in, uh, we've got player meetings, uh, coaches meetings, all of those things. Those will happen tomorrow, and uh, we'll go from there. I appreciate it, Kelly. Rod. Jeff, after you know, looking at the season, are, are there any areas on your team where you feel you need to improve the most going forward to get where you want to be? Yeah, I mean, there, there are. And uh, um, you know, all of those things are in constant evaluation. All of those things um, are addressed in real time. And then tomorrow we'll take a deep dive into every phase um, of the program and uh, figure the best ways uh, to take the next step. Um, got a really good, we built um, some really good young talent on this roster and uh, so proud of the senior leadership, even though it was a small senior class, the leadership that they provided um, to give us a foundation for that young talent to, um, to grow and mature and all those kind of things. But um, we'll talk through those things the, tomorrow, the next couple of days. Jeff. Jeff, I know this could be a tough subject for a, a head coach, but you guys finished with a six-game losing streak, and I think it was 100 and nothing in the last two weeks. Do you think at any point you lost this team? No, and that's a that's a question to uh, ask the guys. Um, but you played the number six ranked team in the country. You played the number one team ranked uh, team number one ranked team in the country, um, and obviously I don't need to go into um, you know all the the things with the, the depth or injuries or anything, nobody cares. Um, uh, so it doesn't matter. Um, but just the, the level of fight, the commitment, the way they come to, to the building every single day, um, they're a pleasure to coach, they're a joy to coach. And uh, we just got to get better in every single area. Uh, but, you know, ask the players that, Jeff. But 
What? Can. Can. Jeff, um, you mentioned his ability to play well, obviously, against the number one team in the country. You know, they're going to take advantage of the same thing as Clemson. But what did you feel like you didn't do to play well? I mean, obviously, I'll tell you how offense you were hamstrung with the injury. And it, it was uh, very similar to um, you know, some other teams around the country and even um, in the area. Um, there were some guys that weren't able to play as of this morning. Um, and obviously the health, safety, and well-being of our student athletes is numero uno. Uh, <coughs> but there were certain positions, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that we were down to four guys per position. Um, and obviously that's tough. We were having to play a lot of three down stuff, which versus 12 personnel has not been our recipe to, to um, you know, generate pass rush or to stop the run. Um, but out of necessity, we were having to do some of those things with depth, depth issues. Um, so just, but just the way the guys, um, you know, it, it's tough. In the back, grab a microphone. I can just yell. It's okay. Coach, uh, Jameer Gibbs, I know he was close to breaking a record today. What happened? Was there an injury? Yep. And can you also speak on uh, his whole season? Yeah, and, and we've said since the day we got here, recruiting matters uh, to us. Uh, we take great value on it, and I think the, the young guys have played, uh, a lot of them, and especially uh, Jameer, Jordan Williams, and that, um, you know, that, that signing class. They're young, uh, but they, they've stepped in and played, um, you know, a lot of football for us already, even though they're young. But Jameer Gibbs, I think, is one of the best players in college football. And, uh, you know, proud that he chose to come here uh, and play for us. And uh, just the way he works, his attitude, his demeanor, who he is as a young man in this program. Uh, he got banged up today. He couldn't finish even though he was trying to. Um, you know, he's, he's one of the toughest kids that I've ever been around. Jordan Williams, um, what he's battled through the last four weeks. Uh, again, a true sophomore playing offensive line. Um, earlier than a lot of teams have to play their offensive line, he's gone, come in and done a really good job. Weston Franklin uh, is a true freshman center that's the last two weeks probably played 60 snaps as a true freshman center uh, against two of the top six teams in the country and uh, handled his business and come out there and knows what he's doing. And, uh, you know, the, and story after story, Caleb Edwards and Noah Collins and Josh Robinson, uh, a bunch of true freshmen uh, out there playing at a high level. Trinilius Tatum uh, is another true freshman. Wasn't able to go today, uh, got hurt, but again, playing um, maybe earlier um, than a lot of places would have to play him, but he comes in and uh, does a nice job. But um, a lot of young talent on this team that um, have a desire, um, have a have a goal and a mission uh, why they chose this place. Um, but it's not about that right now. What it's about uh, is the guys that played their last game, and I'm disappointed um, that I didn't send them out uh, the right way against two great football teams. Okay. Coach, you talked about the recruiting matters. Yep. How important is going to be the development of these young guys? You talked about a lot of guys you just mentioned that yep. got a lot of reps, but the yep. development from that makes you good to great for being key contributors. How big is that? Yeah, I mean, it's huge, and the, the biggest thing too is a lot of those guys that are true freshmen have never been through an off season with us, um, and then Jeff's freshman class have only been through one, and uh, you know, so it's um, I don't want to start talking about the future right now because um, we got to deal with the present. We've got some things that we're going to fix um, in the immediacy, um, but there is a lot of things to be hopeful for. There's a lot of things to be excited about, um, but I don't want to. Uh, start talking about that or worrying about that. Uh, I want to worry about the guys uh, that just played their last game uh, in Bobby Dodd Stadium that I love and respect and truly care for. Come. Jim, how far along are you, you know, in year three in terms of your vision for the programs? And, and obviously the success hasn't been there probably the way you expected. Kind of, how do you see where your program's at at the end of year three? Yeah, I mean, the um, the last two games were a step back. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. The last two games were a step back. 
against two of the top six teams in college football, uh, we took a step back. Um, but every other game, um, the way we matured and um, closed the gap, that's real. And now it's the time to take the next step forward through recruiting. And I appreciate the statement back there uh, and in development. And I think our street staff does an amazing job uh, with the development of our guys, the attitude, the demeanor, all of those things. And uh, you, know, you can't have a, you can't let a setback of two games against two great teams uh, alter everything that we've been building uh, towards. And, uh, but again, we'll refocus on that uh, endeavor tomorrow. Right now is not the time uh, to worry about that, do that. I haven't said that to the team in the locker room. Um, there's a lot of guys that are young and hungry and excited. They know why they chose to come here with us and what we set out to do. Now's not the time. There's guys that just played their last game. The time right now is to love them, show them respect, and uh, you know, help them uh, transition to their next phase, uh, which for a lot of them is going to be uh, to the NFL. Uh, and then for a lot of them, they're going to have a degree from the Georgia Institute of Technology with the lessons learned at this place. And as Todd Stansbury says, developing the young people to change the world, that's the kind of people that are in that locker room. And, uh, you know, so they're going to be uh, uber successful, whatever endeavor uh, that they choose to do on their next step. And I'm just <clears throat> glad that I got to play some small part uh, in that with those guys. Time for a couple more, Rob. Jordan Mason is, is one of the players who stood out today, and he has that option to, to come back sure. for another year. What would it mean to the program if you had him for another year? Yeah, and again, I, I don't want to talk to you about those things. I've had a bunch of conversations over the last uh, couple of weeks with a bunch of guys, um, and obviously those will continue. I've got uh, appointments scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, with a bunch of guys as well, but I'll leave that conversation. I do appreciate it, Rob, but I'll leave that conversation uh, between me and them, leave that conversation uh, between us and their parents uh, as well. But I do appreciate the question. Anything else? Coach, I asked you a lot about the younger guys, but you keep talking about these guys that have been here might play their last game. Off the top of your head, who are some of those guys that are going to leave this program and hopefully make more money for you? Yeah, well, I mean, you just go down the list real quick. Uh, you know, Tariq Carpenter um, has been here five years, been here three with us, and uh, you know, the, the growth and maturity that he's uh, gone through from um, the first year we were here until now. Um, John Brooks goes from being a walk-on uh, defensive tackle in this program um, to now being a two-year scholarship uh, defensive lineman and a captain. Um, Jack Coco goes from being a walk-on triple option offensive lineman uh, to a scholarship tight end and core special teams guy uh, in this program. Devin Cochran has come in um, as a transfer and played at a really high level, changed the attitude and demeanor in that offensive line room. Ryan Johnson has played two years for us um, and stayed to, to play another year to help establish the foundation in that O-line room. Um, and I mean, Kyrick McGowan, uh, Jameer Gibbs called me last December uh, or last January um, when he got his undergrad degree from Northwestern University. And now Kyrick McGowan is going to get his master's degree from Georgia Tech. And he's one of the finest young men that I've ever been around. He's going to be unbelievably successful, whatever endeavor uh, that he chooses. Um, and again, it's one of the, I think Mike says all the time, it's the fourth smallest senior class in college football. But the impact they've made on my life, I hope I've made some kind of impact in theirs. Um, and I know there's some guys that I'm forgetting, Cole Uber, another walk-on that played baseball for Coach Hall and then chose to come and play the last year and a half of football with us. I'm so proud of him. I, I know I'm forgetting somebody. And I really apologize any disservice um, that I do if anybody that I didn't mention. But uh, that, that whole group, even though it's not a big group, matters to me tremendously. Anything else? Last one right over here. Uh, yeah, Coach, uh, you mentioned some of the younger players. Which one of those players are you looking towards uh, leading your team next year and the years to come? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's uh, I think it's a collective, and I, I won't speak name by name, um, but there's some guys that are 
uh, chose to come here for the right reasons. Um, came here with a vision, with a mindset of what uh, we're going to accomplish, and uh, you know, excited for them. You know, some of them have played a lot of ball. Some of them are just starting to get key roles in the program. Um, but there's a lot of good young players um, that are ready to to take that next step in leadership roles um, and uh, as positions of influence. And uh, but again, th this is about uh, the guys that have played here, um, that have been here for four or five years, uh, or some key transfers that just played their last game uh, for us. So I don't want to talk too much about uh, the future out of respect for them, but I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you.